Hello everyone, my name is Legend Ronnie and this game is Rise of Kingdoms. Commander Spotlight, very serious version 2.0. This is exactly what we're gonna talk about today. And oh boy, is there gonna be a lot to talk about him? Yes, there will be. There's quite a big update that I have for Belisarius. He is still the king of mobility. Keep that in mind. Right, first thing first, you guys need to know about the stars, you guys need to know about the sculptures and how expensive it is to upgrade epic commanders. As extra you have for legendaries. More important stuff, you need to know. The equipment only applies from the primary commanders. You want to make sure that whoever is your primary commander has the equipment that you want. After that is the talent. The talents also apply from the primary commander. The second in command, it's always a skill carry. The first one is the primary that always the talents, the equipment, you know, he's the one that you want to focus on, make sure he has the, the best stuff. In terms of upgrading skills, I usually recommend keeping a commander at one star, maxing out their primary skill before you want to unlock the other stars and max the rest of the skills. Let's go a little bit through his skills. Deception. I literally like Belisarius a lot, honestly. I like him a lot and I pretty much use him every day because he's a peacekeeping commander. So I'm actually really, really happy for doing the Commander Spotlight version 2.0 on him. Reducing attack and defense and a little bit of direct damage factor with 450. The second one, it's the Barbarian one, Irresistible. Increase damage dealt to Barbarians and other neutral units by 35%. And now we're starting to get to the good stuff. Increase defense of cavalry units by 30%. Increase march speed by 50% for 10 seconds after leaving the battle. Now you're noticing that it doesn't necessarily specify for cavalry. When target armies has been reduced to less than 50% straight, increase damage dealt by Belisarius army by 25%. Well, I can tell you from now, after plethora of testings, that this 25% is nothing crazy because this 25% is actually the normal white damage that you see on top whenever you're hitting a march or whatever you're, you're hitting barbarians it's not the red which is the skill is the white one so that's the only damage that is gonna increase there is john of arc who also have 25 percent and people are so hyped because they see 25 percent damage increase and this is his expertise which we already have seen it over here because the moment we read this skill this is with expertise attained so this is his expertise another 50 percent calf defense and 25 percent march so overall quite a decent cavalry commander let's go straight into his talents and let's talk about his talent uh, like I mentioned, there's gonna be a lot to talk about the talents, but for players that only care about the best and only ask the question like, what is the best? I would say that this is my all-time favorite talent build for Berisarius right now. You have protection with Emblazoned Shield, you have all the Mars Speed that you desire from, from the Calf Tree, you have all the Mars Speed that you want from the Peacekeeping, and on top of that, you have Trophy Hunter. With a trophy hunter that's a lot of resource packs killing barbarians pretty much you have all the utilities that you want hasty departure and you have swiftness you're probably wondering where will swiftness going to help me that's when you're trying to run away from the enemy or when you're trying to capture an arc and they are hitting you with skill damage you get extra March speed, which might give you a chance to run away. The only thing that you are losing from the so popular build King of Mobility is 6% March speed, which I would gladly trade for having all the other benefits altogether. This is highest mobility build that you can have on Belisarius, but it actually has a downfall. This is the reason I never advise uh, this build or I never done it, but I've done it now on Belisarius, so I can show it to you guys, this is the same build that you can do on Double C as well. Before we go any further, I need to show you the King of Mobility. So this is the King of Mobility build. This is the highest march speed that you can get on Belisarius with the picture that I just posted right now. Now, this build that I have right now with a full mobility and time management, this is, like I mentioned, this is kind of the highest march speed that you can get on Belisarius but let's go a little bit and do the math 
because you're probably wondering how can this be well the only thing that you're losing from the king of mobility is six plus three percent so there's nine percent and you're trading that for time management which gives you 10 percent mars speed so it's just one percent mars speed extra but it has a downfall and this is the reason why i don't advise so much this build increase mars speed of all troops when you're not in combat so for example you just pass by by someone who is fighting with a uh, richard we will just richard has that con area aoe or a ysg or someone else and you're in combat you're not just losing the 10 percent march speed but also decreases an extra 10 percent march speed while in combat so there's 20 percent march speed that you lose having time management so is this actually really that good not so much the only way i would use this build because i have it done and i did use it once is if i have to capture obelisks and you can do this on double c as well if i have to capture obelisks or if i have to capture runes or necessarily get somewhere really fast where i'm not getting in combat so pretty limited utilities for obelisk capture if you want to have the highest march speed or you know that extra percent of march speed, making sure you get there i don't know second or two seconds sooner and now here comes the part where i'm gonna explain a little now this build that i have on belisarius right now this is osiris specific build to capture the arc and deliver them. so this is specifically for that now we all know that overlords there was john wick from overlords who also claimed to have a specific build for um, arc of osiris for capturing the arc so i started tinkering about it i started thinking about it like what would be so special build by just looking at reading at the talents so this is why i came up with i'm not sure if it's the same one first you need protection because you while you're carrying the arc you're not just slowed but you're taking extra damage so literally any kind of protection you do need it so for that reason i went with emblazoned shield the only thing that you you don't have from some of the other builds is this six percent march speed but you have this and we're gonna go there as well you have 30 percent when your march goes to less than 50 percent 30 percent march speed which is really awesome from the peacekeeping you have the 18 most important which again is a lot of march speed 18 percent march speed your question is why i don't have hasty departure well while you're carrying the arc you're definitely not jumping from a building to another or from a caravan to another the moment you enter a caravan you lose the arc so for whatever reason you definitely don't need hasty departure you do need swiftness you definitely definitely need swiftness because you're being attacked you're gonna get skill damage and <laughs> this is definitely gonna help you why triumphant march when armies led by this commander defeat an army belonging to another governor increase march speed by 15 percent for the next 10 seconds you're thinking well i'm running away i'm delivering the arc where is triumphant actually gonna work well supposedly you're not alone carrying the arc are you in the middle you have your team backing you up which are slaughtering the enemy whoever's trying to hit you well if that's the case that means that if they are killing the enemy you're killing it too because you get a victory if someone is touching you even if you're running away you're still hitting it you're counter-attacking him so the moment he gets defeated you are victorious so you get this march speed percentage 15 percent on top of that you can get the swiftness which is another 15 percent march speed and then it brings us to the second part where you use belisarius so i'm bringing up belisarius and babers skills as well so use belisarius primary with babers secondary you get a total of 130 percent march speed for five seconds and then after five seconds you have 115 percent march speed for the duration because if your guys are having your back and they are defeating the enemy if you have belisarius primary and baber second you're leaving the battle you're defeating an enemy and most likely you're being hit by active skills non-stop so all this march speed will stack and will apply and you're pretty much gonna slingshot for about five to ten seconds having a huge huge lead on the arc this is the build that i came up but my all-time favorite which i'm also gonna use it for arc delivery is this because in the same time i can kill barbarians i have the hasty departure i can benefit from that and i have the swiftness skill whenever i get active skill damage when i get hit i get mobility but if you want to go pro on 
the arc delivery my advice is this one with babers as a second in command for extra mobility is this one or you have the all-time king of mobility which is the highest mar march speed that i recommend the king of Mo the one with time management we went through it not highly watered right now you're probably wondering about pairings personally i don't really really like using belisarius primary but i do use him <laughs> The reason I don't like him is because he doesn't actually have a skill talent tree like most of the cavalry commanders and it's not actually doing a lot a lot of damage. If I want to do my 5th cav march on the battlefield, I have to use him. You're noticing he has some green equipment so for that reason he does it because whenever I use a 5th cav march he is going to be primary. And usually who I pair him with as a second if I do use him with Ethelflaed because they both do debuff on the target. Now, if you have Ethelflaed on a different march and you have Belisarius on a different march, so I can explain that as well, the attack and defense reduction, they don't stack. i rather just have them in one army. So that way, Belisarius goes first, and you get attack defense reduction for two seconds, then Ethelflaed goes second, and you have another two seconds of attack defense and health reduction to the target. For that reason, before Ethelflaed, I was using Belisarius and Barca. So if you don't have a max Ethelflaed, or if you're not using Ethelflaed for whatever reason, but you have Barca, for the same reason I was using Belisarius primary Barca second, because Barca does a 5 second debuff, reducing the defense and damage up to 3 targets. How about that? Not just one target, up to 3 targets, because he has expertise attained. So it's Belisarius primary to seconds attack and defense, then it's Barca for five seconds damage and defense. So overall, Belisarius and Barca can give you a seven seconds or seven turns of defense decrease on the target, which is pretty dope. I know Barca has this mix of troops type of bonuses, but no, I was going full cavalry. The only thing I was caring about Barca was his primary skill and the fact that I can get another 10% troops capacity. When battling outside of Alliance territory, increase damage of all Hannibal Barca's troops after using a skill. So this works as well when you're fighting outside. So that's the only thing that I was caring about Barca, not his mix of troops capabilities. That's another pair that you can do. <clears throat> Who else you can pair Belisarius with for specific, specifically just for arc capture? You can go with Babers, I already mentioned about them. If you want really, really fast arc capture, you can go Belisarius primary, you can go Babers second. Pretty much any other builds you want to do with Belisarius primary should be only focused on killing farms and nothing really that crazy. So if you're not, if you don't, don't want to do the pairs that I just mentioned, you're pretty much one using just for farms. If you still want to use him on the battlefield, another way I would recommend it would be with John of Arc as a second. Because basically what he's doing is debuffing a target and with John of Arc you also have buffs to your other marches. So if I want to do like 5 marches, free to play 5 marches, I've done a video for that. The last march was Belisarius primary and John of Arc second, which also works really really good you have mobility with belisarius which is very important you're going full cavalry march you have the mobility so you can basically choose your battles you want to fight on so if things go wrong if belisarius is being hit there's no reason to leave a march there just getting slaughtered you have the mobility you can retreat either by going in a building and then retreating it home or whichever option if you have mix of troops they are slow and you just get smashed but with cabs you have options so you don't just fill up your hospital unnecessary and probably being knocked out of the game in about an hour an hour and so that's why i prefer mobility because i can always retreat my armies so that's another way you can go with uh, Belisarius, Belisarius primary, John of Arc second. For field battle, another pair you can do, and it was giving a lot of results, is Pelagius primary and Belisarius second. The Cavs are really, really tanky with this build, and players who have kept using it, they told me they have great results with this. 
you have 15% defense and with 30, that's 45% defense on your calves. Using Pelagius Primary, you have a little bit of healing, rage restoration, utility tanking type of march because you have the buff from Belisarius, you have uh, damage from Pelagius, rage restoration, a lot of defense. You have mobility from Belisarius if things go wrong and you want to bounce off. Extra damage, you know, nothing that crazy, but a little bit of extra damage if the target is low. So this is another pair that actually works uh, very, very good. Another way you can use Belisarius is if some of your march are being weak. So if some of your calf marches, for example, you're not happy how Miramoto is performing on the battlefield. He's being swarmed down, he's going down really fast. You can put Belisarius second or you can put Scipio second. There's two options. Same thing with Genghis. If you're not happy how Genghis, because he's dying, he's going down very fast, you don't have any other options, you probably don't have a Max Adin. You can go with either Belisarius or you can go again, even with Scipio as a second, just to make him tankier. Now this might sound really, really crazy when I say these kind of things, but this is exactly what I do on the battlefield. This is how all my five marchers are on the battlefield. I always have a weak commander or a, an attacking commander or just a mixture of both. Like I have Pelagius and Double C. They both have heal. They are not so heavy defensive, but they both have heal and they actually go down pretty, pretty hard for that reason. The best way I can show you my, my marchers on the battlefield is like this. This is literally my defense in the Sunset Canyon. So this is Genghis and Saladin, Babers and Etherfled, Plagueis and Double C, YSG and Frederick. The reason I use YSG and not Edward is because he does faster skills than Edward. Edward takes too long to do skills, sometimes the march goes about 70k truth before he does a skill and in Sunset Ken you need very fast skill damage. And then I have Inamoto and Sansu. So this is pretty much my uh, five field battle marches. So if I want to do my five calf marches on the battlefield, I obviously not going to use YSG and I'm using Belisarius with either Barca or I'm taking Etherfled from, from Babers and I just put someone, someone else with Babers. Even YSG, Babers YSG, there's nothing wrong. AOE and AOE. So this is pretty much how I'm mixing and playing around with my marches and my commanders. There's plenty of synergy and plenty of possibility and combinations within the marches. Right, so again, Belisarius is one of the commanders that I pretty much use every day because of the capabilities of slaughtering barbarians. I use him in the arc. He's one of the commanders that has a lot, a lot of utilities. You should definitely, definitely use him. Any other questions you guys have, you can always drop them in the comment section below and I'll be very happy to answer them. Until next time, this is your boy Legend Ronnie signing off. Peace out, yo, and take care.